Good morning, Mike's Diabetes World. Well, it's a beautiful late spring morn in Vancouver, and we're out doing our normal boarding walk. And today I want to talk about disability. And if you're a Canadian, a disability tax credit. And we'll be right back to discuss this. Have a great morning. here and say I am not a doctor I'm not a trained diabetic educator it's just this channel is my feelings and take what you want from it but get it checked out with your own medical professional hope you enjoy the video Disability Tax Credit. Now, years ago, I'm thinking back, was it 2013? Five years, 2018. Yeah, it was about then. I was thinking about applying for a disability tax credit. And there were a whole bunch of companies advertising, are you disabled? You need to apply for this. And the problem was, a lot of these were not legitimate companies. Sorry, I just got my things over here for Nico. And they would work on trying to get you this disability tax credit on false grounds and take a lot of money for it. But they weren't doing it under if the person was truly disabled. And so often we have to take a look and think can I actually fill this out myself? Well, ideally, you should go off and do it yourself. And you want to fill out the diabetic, <coughs> excuse me, tax credit form truthfully. Because if you don't fill it out truthfully, it's tax evasion and tax fraud. However, if you fill out the form and you honestly make an error, once you realize you made an error, you should complete it or ask for your form back. your tax credit form, or I think it's a T2201. Has to be filled out by your doctor. And then another, sorry, I got a head today, professional. Now, I think this could be an occupational therapist, a nurse practitioner. I had my diabetes nurse fill it out. Now, you need to also have your medical practitioner being your GP or uh, for me, it's probably going to be my endocrinologist. Now, the problem is my old endocrinologist, she has stopped 
taking patients and is going to be working more in the um, being a associate dean, associate or assistant dean or at the UBC School of Medicine. So, I have a new one, but the new one's known me since 2014. So that's, let's pause it. When you fill out your portion or ask your doctor to fill it out or you need to fill any information and you have to take your worst day. Right? What do you need for your worst day with your disabled? Now that doesn't mean, oh, well, I get migraines once every six months and oh they're bad and I have to end up in emergency I don't know I don't know if that qualifies it's something you do that you need help with every single day whether it be your living your elimination of bowels and again don't lie if you lie, you're just going to get in trouble. You're going to get your doctor in trouble. But in most cases, the doctors can weed out people who don't really need it. Now, I'm on a disability tax credit for years because with my diabetes, it is extremely a brittle type of diabetes. And I don't know when I'm going to go low. And, you know, if I'm dealing with money or such, it can take an awful long time for me to be out of work. And, you know, if I'm not working on my business or whatever, and... I have a low, you know, it could be in a meeting of an important meeting or, you know, I was serving cash and couldn't get off the cash register in time. And so often we need to be aware But if you do have problems in movement and you are truly disabled, the, the disability tax credit may work for you. Now, in British Columbia, we have an association that can help fill out your forms. It does require that you probably go and see your doctor and ask for a diabetic tax credit. Getting this is an accomplishment, to say the least, and doesn't mean that you're going to be labeled, oh, you're disabled. Oh, you're an invalid. You can't do anything. Well, that's not true. The disability tax credit, as it affects people with diabetes, is are you spending an enormous amount of time taking care of yourself? Now, for me, I get up. I do my blood works, I do my pumps, and it takes can take over two hours a day. I also have problems in moving and for dressing. So that can contribute to diabetic tax credit. It's not... You want to make sure you get everything right. 
Now don't don't try to exaggerate your symptoms. Oh, let's just make it make you know, let's exaggerate. However, if you have such a condition where you have to take care of yourself on a pretty regular basis, then you can apply. I'm not trying to talk people out of applying for the the diabetic or not the diabetic the disabled tax credit Uh, but on the other side if you need it by all means go for it I got it and I have to reapply you only get the certificate for about five years and it's due, and I need to go through and fill fill things out. Now you can take it, and I think you can get some money back on pass. But you need to ensure that you know when you actually started to become disabled. And your doctor will help with that. Now, if I can remember correctly, there's the personal information, which you will fill out yourself. Then, there's part where your doctor has to fill it out. And then there's a third part, which I believe can be done by the nurse practitioner occupational therapy ophthalmologist so so they're taking a look at it coming from three points and again if you go through these companies they will they want you to get it so they get their money and They may employ less than ethical doctors to say, oh, yes, this person is um, unable to work. This person can't do this. And, you know, that can be true. But if it isn't, then you get in trouble. So, when you go to fill out your form or have your doctor fill it out, you have to be truthful to you. Whether, are you truly disabled? Now, only you, your doctor, or whoever else you get to fill out the form can know for sure. Diabetic tax credits are an accomplishment, I said before, and it's important that if you have the chance to fill it out and get the documents, then that's a plus. But make sure you your doctor knows you and don't go off to a doctor that really hasn't been taking care of you or doesn't really know about your disease and how it affects your life a lot of diabetic people doctors know of the disability tax credit now just because you have diabetes does not mean you get the diabetes or the disabled tax credit. Keep wanting to call it the diabetes tax credit. It's time for me to go on this road again. 
going and getting the paperwork filled out and getting processed. God, I... How do I feel that I'm disabled? Huh? I take care of myself. Every day I have a little trouble dressing. Taking care of my diabetes? Yeah, it's a full-time job. Whether it's blood work, treating my low... And I can have two or three a day. So, I've been off work for diabetes and have had the tax credit for the last five years. And it's always something good to have. But once you don't get it, it's gone. So you do have to reapply. And you want to get on it as soon as possible. So, yes, I'm going to have my forms printed and, you know, take care of getting things involved and have a meeting with your doctor, have a meeting with an orthopedic, an occupational therapist, and to talk about how this affects you and how might you be able to benefit from tax credits. Okay, we need to get back to one thing. And yes, um, it's a little bit later we're going back on our walk with Nico. But I can see some of you wondering, well, I'm a diabetic. How do I get on it? Well, just because you're diabetic does not mean that you are disabled. Being disabled is so much more. I I physically can't work because the amount and the times I need to test, it keeps me active in trying to find out what my blood sugar is and how to correct it. Secondly, if I have a low blood sugar and I can have low blood sugars and I don't even know I'm having low blood sugars but I can have a serious one. Now, my last job before resigning was with a grocery store. And I can remember times where I thought it was fine and people were going back to the service desk saying, oh, they gave me too much change and I didn't know what was going on. And So uh, for me, that's diabetic, um, what is it called? Um... I don't die or hypoglycemia and awareness. It wasn't diabetic, it was hypoglycemia. Now because of this I can't really hold any job of responsibility. Um because I don't know when I'm gonna go low. I have a hypoglycemic awareness dog who does a great job. But you know, these are all things added to the care of myself. So that's another thing. What also makes me disabled is I'm in a chair not because oh yes, I thought it would be neat to have a chair just to Uh, run around and do things with. For me, I got the chair because I was 
getting hurt from falling from a low blood sugar. And that is no fun whatsoever. My legs can give out. I get pains in my legs sometimes that... Oh, they're just terrible. So we need to make sure that we take care of certain things. Your blood sugars, the taking of them, all comes into the amount of time. For me, it takes over two hours a day. Me limiting, pretty well limited to the chair. I have nerve pain and I can remember going in and sitting with my doctor at the time and she said your you know are you going to have enough money for food because we were talking about the uh, oh, what do you call it oh the cashiering job I wasn't getting the hours, especially during the summer months when a lot of the younger people who had more seniority came back. And we were talking about how much I get with welfare and would I be able to make it. And then something she said resonated. And she said, well, how much do you get? And I said, well, this. And if I, you know, if I was on disability, I would get this. And she said, well, you know, I think it's actually time. Because you have proven that you've tried to live with this. You've tried to work with it. We've had problems with working and sustaining your life. So that's how I got onto disability. Now, I went to, I had gone and got initially welfare to cover the hours that I didn't work. So. And then when they found out that I was working and have worked before, I got the BC insurance. Then I got the Canadian insurance. Now it was funny, just an aside here. Everyone said, oh, BC will be a breeze. And um, CPP, oh, that's a piece of cake. Well, it actually took me more time to get the CPP tied up than it did the BC. So don't, you don't necessarily, there's no generalization on how long it will take. It can take months. So, if you're currently working and feel like you need to go on um, disability, be be prepared for the wait. Don't let it get you down. They are working on things. Get your paperwork all in order. Make sure everything that needs to be filled out for you is filled out. Keep a copy. I can remember back in the day, I went through with um, going to the Canada Service Center and filling out um, paperwork and everything there. 
Though I not looked at the application before I started today, I have to print it out yet, and it said I had to send it to the Winnipeg tax office. So. Enjoyed the time? Oh, yes. So I may just take it to Service Canada again if that's an option because then I know they actually have the documentation in place and they were pretty good and you know I waited I think it was around two months or so and then I got a letter saying on blah 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 day you have been approved for your dis for your disability. For BC disability, I had to fill out. It was almost like a book. The application was enormous, and you, know, you had to, how does this affect you, and how does that affect you, and that's where. I went to talk to someone to tell me how do I fill out these paperwork and they're the ones that told me fill it out like it's your worst day with your disabilities don't fill it out and don't make up stories don't exaggerate your claims because sometime you're going to have to to prove it. Now, for me, getting dressed can take longer. Getting my legs to move the way I want sometimes is a total pain. I have to take time with my blood sugars and reading them and filing them and finding out what to do. So, it basically works out, I think, works out to seven hours, or sorry, 14 hours a week. If you believe you are disabled and you want to claim it or whatever go ahead and fill out the forms but make sure you have your doctors okay with it and that you have someone fill out your form now I mentioned somewhere earlier you need your obstet obstetrician yeah. but your occupational therapist I had my diabetic nurse fill it out and you know things did very well I got everything I needed I put it in line I went to S Service Canada I gave them all and it goes right to where it needs to go for those of you who don't know Service Canada is sort of a clearing center for all the departments of the Canadian government. And down in Burnaby, Vancouver area, there's sort of round and geographical spots. Now, if you need a social insurance number, you can go there and blah, blah, blah. Now, I need to work on that and get that done. I don't think I got my total tax taken off because it probably expired on me. So, I will go through, do the information, send it off, and we'll have fun. Anyway, if you want it, Go and take a look at the um, information. You can take a look at ads from companies that do the work. I think there's a few on the internet. 
that I think the forms are pretty well just laid out. And I know that if you're a diabetic who's gone out, then for all sakes, do it. You deserve it. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.